Lesson 5.2 Extension. So we're going to go and build on what we just covered in 5.2. We talk about graphing proportional relationships. That's going to be the first part of this video. And then we're also going to include Lesson 5.3 in this video as well, since I normally do them together. Down there, you can see in your state standards that we're going to represent proportional relationships. And we'll be able to identify this constant proportionality, the unit rate or ratio. When we look at it, that's what we're going to do today, determine with graphs and interpret graphs as well. Are the quantities proportional? It says to use ratios. So when we see that, what ratio do you see here? Though it's written sideways, we can still write, write it as a ratio, and I want to write the ratio as a fraction. 2 over 4, which simplifies down to 1 half. What ratio do you see here? Well, we got that. 4 to 6, again, 4 being the x on top and the y next. Same thing in the first one, x and then y. Simplify that fraction or ratio down. And do we have the same ratio? If yes, then you need to check the last one. In this case, no. No, we do not. Are they proportional? Final answer, no. If it's said to explain, you can do that. No, the ratios are not equivalent. The fractions did not come out the same. Use the quantities to find out if they're proportional. Are these proportional? It says to use a graph. So from there, let's graph these. Notice again, we're talking about graphing, just like in the alphabet, x then y. So you're going to start with the x, go over 3 and then go up to 1, and you're going to make a dot there. Then go 6 over 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 1, 2. Make a nice dot there on that line, and then go over 9, and up 1, 2, 3. Make a dot there on that. You have now graphed them. I myself am going to make a line through them here. Wonderful. And I'm going to put arrows on both sides of that because that's how it's supposed to be when you write them on in. You don't need to draw the arrow in, but I do want to show you, or the line, I do want to show you some things. When we talk about using a graph to see if they're proportional, there's two things. It needs to be a straight line. Everybody say line. Okay. Write down number one and put down the, the word line. It needs to be a straight line. So is our graph over here going in a straight line? Yes, it is. That's line. Everybody say line. Did you say line? Say it again. Say line. Next, it needs to go through or touch the origin. And as I share in class, origin, much like superhero movies, whether it's X-Men origin, Spider-Man origin, whatever it is, when you hear origin, it means the beginning. So for us in math class, please make the note that that's the point zero, zero. So does it touch... Does it go through this zero, zero point here? Yes, it does. So then to answer the question, are they proportional? You can just write on out that yes, they are. So you can just put down final answer. Yes. If you had to explain or justify your reasoning, you say yes, it's a straight line through the origin. If one of them is not true, then when you tell me no, you tell me no, it's not a line. Or you say, no, it did not go through the origin. Now, if you don't get a chance to graph it, you can see here uh, by our table, the x's are going up the same amount each time. What are they going up? They're going up by 3 each time, which is good. They're consistent. So if I went backwards then, 9, 6, 3, what would the previous number be here? Going backwards, that would be? Zero. So then down here, what are the X, or the, excuse me, the Y's increasing by? They're going up one each time. That means it's a straight line because all the Y's increased by one and all the X's went up by the same value on the X side with the three. Now work backwards. Three, two, one. What would the previous number be back here? Zero, so you can see it also goes through the origin that way. That is the extension quick notes. 
So there is a worksheet. If you want to pause right now, you can pause. That's what I usually show in class. So just listen to Mr. Walls or listen to instruction, whatever your teacher says about when it's due or how many points it might be. But uh, number one, there's an extension worksheet. So if you want to pause the video right now and finish that, you can. Otherwise, I'm going to continue on and do notes on 5-3. So pause now if you'd like. Welcome back. If you didn't pause, you're still there, and here we are. If you did pause, thanks for cleaning that worksheet. And let's move on to Lesson 5-3, Writing Proportions, where we have that 7RP2 and 7RP3 standards that you can see in your notes like we just had on the previous one. When we talk about that today, 5-3, the reason why we do these together is literally your assignment is you can write proportions. You don't have to solve them. You're just writing out two fractions. So uh, let's do that. Write a proportion, but notice it says to do not solve. So in this class, I put a little smiley face. I don't know what happened there with that squiggly line, but oh, well, do not solve. Before we get there, I must write a note. In my class, tests are always out of 100%. It makes things nice in my class, but it doesn't matter if you're in math class or science middle school or high school, if you're in uh, science study, if you're in business, no matter what, percent always means out of 100. So in my class, if you have a 90% on your test, you have a 90 out of 100. If you had a 95 on a test in my class, you have a 95 out of 100. If you have 70%, you have a 70 out of 100. If you have 105%, you have 105 out of 100. So when you see a percent like this, and like you will see on the first couple of problems, write it as 80%, 80 out of 100. Because you have 80, the percent you got right, the part you have right is 80 out of the entire 100. So now we've got this other number here. We've got this number 30, 30 points. Is that the part you got or is that the total amount? If it's the part you got, we put it on the top, but it is not. It's what the whole test is worth. So that needs to go on the bottom because it's the whole thing. And now pick a variable whatever you'd like, and that is what we end with. Put a box around it. You have written a proportion, and you do not need to solve. Up next, again, there it is. Write a proportion, but do not solve. So if you want to put a little bubble cloud around it, a little happy face again, you can do that. Otherwise, right here, what fraction, what ratio do you see? I see 1.5 over 10. Great. So now over here then, what ratio, what fraction do you see there? X over 15. That's it. When you write a proportion, we're done. Next lesson, chapter 5, lesson 4. We're going to figure out how to solve for this so that way we can figure out how much profit you did make on Tuesday. But for this one, you're just writing them out. You can see here we've got solve this. Now, in, the, in your instructions, it's going to say solve mentally. And even though we can do that, you're in math class. Mr. Walls is your math teacher. So I want to see the work. What we're going to do is we're going to find and look at the side without the variable. So looking here, the bottom two numbers, the bottom, the denominators are just numbers. So focus in on them. Which one is smaller, the 5 or the 15? Since the 5 is smaller, can you take 5 times something to make 15? Yes, you can. 5 times 3. Remember, play nice, share with everyone. If you were to take the bottom times 3, take the top times 3, that means n equals 24. Though the textbook says solve mentally, I do not want just 24 magically appearing. So make sure that you put all of this in. So you write on in the proportion, and then you show me this times 3. Show me your work. On IXL or standardized test, just put down 24 and move on. But again, today, that is what you are looking at for your assignments. Can you write it? 
That's half of the I can's. I can write a proportion. That's this guy right down here. You can write it. And then it says to solve mentally a couple of times. That is our task today. So now if you're watching this video, please continue on to the next assignment, the 5.3 assignment.